welcome to my channel. I went over this game. Engine, in fact, is composed of elements. Have you ever wondered what the best character for each element is? We're going to try to answer that question in today's video. A couple of the best characters for each element in Genshin Impact video. What do you mean, no comments? It says there's 71 comments, unless those are all somehow spam. In which case, I feel really bad for I win to lose. frankly, there are too many characters in Genshin Impact to only choose one from each element. So I will choose at least one support and one DPS character for each element, as well as some honorable mentions. By also, default, all YouTube comments that are considered primarily. spam by the algorithm don't show up on the comment section. Except for the chat content creator that owns the channel. They could enable it. That's right. But by default it's visible only to the creator. All thanks to today's sponsor, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Unless you've been Bruh. looking at Geo Construct, you know that Samsung makes some of the best phones in the world. All Do they? In the Galaxy Battles, Genshin Impact. Or a bunch of your favorite Genshin Impact content creators will duke it out so that we can win My tablet guys doesn't agree. Prizes, including Samsung Galaxy Devices and Cash. Mark your calendars because the grand finals will be live streamed on April 21st at the Samsung US's official YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook channels. Be sure to tune in to myself, M Cash, Minsley, Wop, Gotcha Gamer, and many others as we sling geo constructs at each other and ingest those sweet, sweet madams. Obviously, we'll be doing all this on the S24 Ultra, because it's one of the few incredibly powerful phones that can run Genshin Impact so flawlessly. Also sporting a high resolution camera, perfect for taking pictures of yourself touching grass. The zoom on this thing is incredible. With 10x zoom, you can even admire each individual blade of grass. Don't forget to tune in on April 21st. Play like a pro and check out the S24 Ultra down in the link below. Starting off with the first element that's not really the first element by any sort of logical order, whether it's alphabetical or which element we obtain first, it's Electro. Now, I have a hot take on who the best Electro support character, that will probably also reflect my bias. But in my opinion, it's Kuki Shinobu. Kuki Shinobu is one of the only 4-star characters who use full platform EM stat only artifacts, craft a completely and steam operation, be able to 9 star Abyss 12 win. Not dependent on what she she heals, she can best 4 star electro character with Piper with them, not dependent on artifact substats, she can even be used on other wacky teams, and she can do damage. It's absolutely goofy how much she can cut. And, well, compared to the rest of the electro cast as a support character, there is only one other character I would consider to be a possible contender, which I'll mention later. I think very few of us are going to be surprised by my choice by the Shogun. Her on field prowess and ability to batter her entire team is incredibly valuable. And while I did say the best main DPS character, she's an incredible driver for the right natural team, and she's incredible as an off field hyper activator. And of course, an incredible on field main DPS character, especially with a couple constellations. As for some shocking honorable mentions, Constellation 6 Sar deserves an honorable mention for Contender as the best Electra support. And I think Fischl and Yai deserve a mention for the Yes, world as well. Before we get into the next fake element, I need your help. Engine analytics have been down, and I'm giving you the next 20 or so seconds of yapping to help me out and to get me press that like button. Also, comment down below what you have for breakfast. I'm personally on Team Waffle Stop Me. The next element is none other than an element that literally doesn't even have an icon. Physical. Thank you, Hawkeye Star Rail. I'll be borrowing that icon. Now, Physical has some very slim pickings, which is ironic considering all the characters that can control physical damage. I think it's pretty obvious who the characters I'm going to choose are, but it's obviously Shinyan. Okay, okay, let's be real, that's Yula. Yeah, Yula's not in the best place right now as main DPS character, considering one of her best teams is Hyper Bloom. That should tell you everything you need to know about the state of physical damage in the game currently. Still, as the only 5-star physical DPS character, it's no surprise to see her here. As for the best physical support character, I have to give it to Mika, as he is basically the only physical damage support character. 
Shin Yan and technically Rosaria kind of fit into that as well. Game while doing great damage yourself it enables every type of damage reaction pretty much better than any other character in the game. Anyway, this is boring to me with how broken she is, because we all know about that right now. Let's talk about another obvious option. I'll hate him as the best Dendro DPS character. He's flexible, he goes damage, and most importantly, he's handsome. Honorable mention goes to my group sport, especially if it's during the game. She is the best thing to do. And Chinari does have some situations where he competes with a carry like I'll hate them, but he deserves a shout out as well. Then we have the element of the rockiest history, Geo. This support from the Geo element is good. My defense was watered Holy fuck, Yanfei sucks. I do think positive takes from price here. Hyro is another tricky element, but not for the support side. For the support side, it's got to be Bennett. While Bennett isn't as broken as he used to be, he's still Bennett. Fighting up to 1,202 flat attack buff, massive healing, and even Pyro Infusion at Constellation 6. Even with him not being perfectly compatible with him, Bennett is still the go-to and dominant Pyro support character in Genji. In fact, hitting DPS, this is actually pretty difficult, but I think it's between Ku Tao, Linny, and Xiang Wei. They are all exceptional Pyro DPS characters for their own reasons, and it's really hard to go wrong with Shang them. Shang Ling is sent the mentions, BS, not an on-field one at least. Characters and Arlequina's coming up, but we'll have to see how she performs. Freeze, because the best Cryo character is up next. It's weird to say this, but I actually think Cryo has been one of the more reflected elements in recent times. Before I agree. Story, I would have said it was Geo, but it's actually Cryo. This is likely due to how inherently dominant Cryo was in the past. Nowadays, well, it's still good. But we've only gotten wisely as a 5-star crowd character since Shen Fu in version 2.4. Cryo has ironically now become the most neglected element. Anyway, the best support for Cryo is also the most expensive, being Shen Fu. Surprisingly, we don't actually have a lot of Cryo supports, and especially not ones that I would consider to be very universal. No offense to Layla or Charlotte, while they are decent support characters, it's hard to compare them to Shen Fu, who just catapults other Cryo characters. And Nika, well, we already established he's a physical support character. Have you seen how much crowd he applies? Basically nothing. The coolest he character around, I'm gonna have to give this to a another three-way tie between Risley, Ayaka, and Don Yu. They all have their advantages and play very differently. And unlike, for example, I'll hate them versus the other gender as characters, I don't think the gap between these three is so extreme as to disqualify any of them from being serious contenders for, in my opinion, best DPS crowd character. Let me know if you best crowd DPS character down below. And lastly, we have the voiceless element, I think. 
Pedro has broken characters in the nice. Of the Busted. Game's up. Thumbs over. Quietly now. Yeah! Let the magic begin! Yeah. Uh, motion to compel! Incinerate! Dang, it's only refinement too. I try Yanfei on a mono pyro team. Technically, my strongest mono pyro would just be overload with Chevrus. I got a new letter from an informant. Looks. Be sure to make a proper appointment. My my only choice is official. The threads of your fate lie in my hands. The campaign begins. Versus battle. And if it isn't a thing, I'm going to make it one because I think it should be. 
the Invincible Universe really isn't one to shy away from over the top and say battles against the strongest characters in the series. Robert Kirkman continually throws his Invincible characters in great other popular characters, claiming that Invincible could beat Superman. Well, Robert, no offense, but I really thought that maybe you should have made him stronger or shown us how strong he is, because we didn't even say it for years, kind of guessing how strong your point is. Since it's also not a great look that he almost dies in the sun when this is what happened. Superman thinks it's not good. Anyway, I digress. Robert is awesome, and so is Invincible. Like I said, in this series, we haven't had any battle against each other in the fight for the United Come on, battle. Come on, Grippy! I'm going in! Huh? I'm Stop right there! Hands right up! Take your assignment! Okay. Incinerate! Wings of Darkness! Teamwork is Dreamwork! Drop your weapons! Justice will prevent Invisible evidence! Motion to compel! Conquering thousands of worlds, Carter the title Scourge and Twin Galaxies. It was so infamous that millions of life forms throughout the universe were scared to even utter his name. How Machine Head, a two bit gangster, was able to employ Battle Beast is beyond me. This eventually led to a direct confrontation between the people and the folk, who he easily dismantled and left dead as they were deemed not worthy enough for him to be killed. Sometime later, he was captured, but he was eventually freed by Nolan and Alan. He heard that there were Viltrumites aboard the floating prison, and having never faced one in battle before, he demanded that they face him. He tore through the Viltrumite bot, and then floated into that space until he was found frozen solid. He was then convinced to join the Coalition. He assisted them in many battles where he would again tear through their forces, even going as far as to use Viltrumite warriors as weapons against other Viltrumite warriors. However, when he challenged Thrag, he was set whimpering into the back of space and again. Eventually, he was tasked with tracking down and finally killing Thrag once and for all. Thrag was injured by a Ragnar, so to make this battle fair, Fox sliced himself open. I guess getting her to level I turned to higher help. rate to meet outside yeah. the office. They battle each other for days on end. As per our contract. Wow, she kind of sucks. Each seemingly Let me try three. With other. But after days of endless battle, Thrag gets the upper hand and slays Battle Beast. Thrag is easily the most powerful being the Coalition has ever faced. He one-shots Omni-Man, tears apart Thetis, and really just puts a brutal beating on anyone. What is the situation? The As I mentioned earlier, there is one feat that the community has gone back to time and time More again. Companions. The destruction hey. of the planet Viltro, which makes the top-tier characters in the universe fall planetary at that time. And Thrag routinely one-shots those characters. So how does Alan stand a chance against Battle Beast, who went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the strongest being in the universe for days on end? Well, let's find out. Alan has an inherent ability to adapt and develop his powers and so This is a crafty developmental process that triggers after a period literally embodies the phrase, whatever doesn't Stronger. After the force of them, 
Otherwise, how is it matter that you may just cause that I do a filter months? But at this point, Alan will the likes of Anissa over Alan Park. Alan will sell both that you will obliterate her fight. And he will go on to do that. Klaus himself is captured and held prisoner in prison on the captain. And at any point, Alan could have gotten up and walked out the door, while Nolan was powerless to escape. Guards attempt to test the power by the necessary, so powerful that their weapons scrapped on them. When it was time to bust out, Bill Twice went for Alan. Much later on, Alan gets into a fight with Army Man. Alan easily beats down Nolan while he was attacking him again. Mm. Or, now we're talking about Brad Power, but don't stop there. <laughs> Later on, Mom survives the dad's end. Now at the Let the magic begin! Dip us! All hail! Access denied! All protect us! Motion to compel! Born of ice and frost. Next on the agenda. Over here. Entering combat mode. Let's do it. No touching! Motion to compel! Born of ice and frost! Go, Barbara, go! Oh, who else do I have for off field cryo? Apparently, Virginia is very good. But after it, in context, not to mention that at the roots, Alan is more powerful, so the gap just becomes that much wider. As for why Alan never went to fight the crowd himself, again, though, she needs to be level 90 for death, so. Who's our target this time? Dang, level 90 is super important. Fucking hell. Let us know down in the comments below what is your argument, what is your rationale. I'd love to say 
Paris. Given what I've debunked so far, whether it's the Velikovsky and nonsense of the Thunderbolts project, the cold fusion investment scam that is the Sapphire project, or the dubious day cult of suspicious observers, the flavors may vary. The central theme is always the same. All of the mainstream physicists in the world are wrong, blind, and dogmatic. While this brave, spectacularly unqualified non physicist is right. This type of narrative exists in other areas of science as well, but it is oddly prevalent in astrophysics and cosmology, attracting those who simply like the idea that all of physics is wrong and will therefore immediately trust anyone who tells them so, provided they use an objective jargon. Today, I'd like to add one more person to this list of unqualified hacks due to the frequency of which this channel is cited in the comment section of my TMOs. That is Pierre Marie Robitaille, whose channel is named Sky Scholar. Who is this guy? What does he say? And why is all of it so completely wrong? Let's take a closer look now. First, a bit of background. Again, everyone who falls for this uh, seems to believe in Okay. <laughs> Splendid! More interesting trinkets for me.